I'm excited about the word of God. Jesus Christ, the Holy One of Israel, he already came and he did it all for us at the cross. He died for us at the cross. And we should cling to that old rugged cross. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I know lately, I've been talking a lot to you all about CERN, and that's not what I'm going to be talking to you all about today, but I just want to say while it's on my heart that no matter what the people say, no matter what the enemy is trying to do, Jesus Christ, Satan is the God of this world, this world's systems, the commerce and the government and all the things of this world, but Jesus Christ is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And no matter what the enemy uses his people who are his servants to do, they can never go beyond what God established for them to go. So we need to keep our hearts, our minds, stayed on the Lord Jesus Christ because in Isaiah says, he whose mind is stayed on Christ, thou will keep in perfect peace. Jesus will keep you in perfect peace. Our rest is in Jesus. Our peace is in Jesus. Our redemption is in Jesus. Our salvation is in Jesus. And Jesus Christ is bigger than any demon spirit or any machine that they have spent trillions of dollars to, to make and trying to open up something. Jesus Christ is still in control. So don't allow fear and anxiety and all the things that the enemy is trying to do by allowing us to know this information. We're supposed to know our enemy. <coughs> we need to know what the enemy is up against so we'll know how to pray. Because the Lord tells his people that be children of the day and pray without ceasing. Am I making sense to you so far? So today what I really want to talk to you about is the heart. And I want to give you the definition of heart. It's a strong concordance Greek definition of the word heart. And if you want to look it up in strong concordance, and I'm going to give you this information because I want you to become like the Bereans. The word of God says study to show yourself approved, learning how to rightly divide the word of truth. You need to be able to study to be able to recognize and discern the spirit and the voice of God. So that word, the number and, and, the, and the concordance is 2840. And it comes, it, it's, it's called, it's pronounced cardia, K-A-R-D-I-A, that's when you get C-A-R-D-I-A from. The, the heart means your mind. It's the seat of thought and emotions. The heart was thought to be the seat of the inner self. Composed of life, soul, mind, and spirit. Heart is similar in meaning to soul. And that's what the enemy is trying to get, your soul. The heart has to focus on thinking and understanding. I'll read it for you again because I want you to get it. Your heart is the core center of you. And that's what the enemy is fighting to program, manipulate, and regulate. Heart mind is the seat of thought and emotions. The heart was thought to be the seat of the inner self. Composed of life, soul, mind, and spirit. Heart is similar in meaning to soul. The heart has the focus on thinking and understanding, your intellect, your conscious. And that's the part of you, I'm going to repeat this because I want you to really get this today. Your heart is synonymous with your mind, the core, center of you. So what the enemy is trying to do through TV, movies, video games, music, Signboards, posts, board, billboards, every aspect of our lives, symbols. The enemy is trying to use these things to program your mind, manipulate your mind, 
hijack your mind, contaminate your mind, pervert you, because that's the center core of you. He wants, to, he wants your affection. He wants your emotions to be centered on the things that is going to exalt him. And when you do that, you're not able to hear or focus on Jesus. And Jesus Christ is not the center of your life when you allow everything else in that chokes out your heart, your mind, your focus on Jesus. And I'm going to give you scriptures. And when I was... Looking up these scriptures, it was really blessing me to the point where it actually made me chuckle. They are so awesome. I want to start in Mark. And I pray in Jesus' name that you get out of these verses the scriptures at least what I got out of it, which was I was greatly blessed. So now the scriptures start to take on a life and a meaning and an understanding all of itself, whereas before it might not have made sense. Now it should make even better sense. The second chapter of Mark, and remember, these scriptures is only meant to highlight the definition of heart. Verse 8 said, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they saw reason within themselves, he said unto them, this is Jesus now speaking, why reason you these things in your, in your hearts? So he was perceiving in their minds, so the mind is synonymous with their hearts. That's where you reason, that's where you process. Do you see it? Turn to Luke. I have many scriptures, but I have a short message. Luke chapter 1. God loves us. We walk by faith and not by sight. The enemy don't want you to have faith and confidence and find a place of rest in Jesus. Luke chapter 1. Chapter, 50, chapter 1 verse 51 says, He has showed strength in his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. <clears throat> So you, your imagination, your mind, you imagine in your mind, that's your heart. You see? Can you see it? Let's turn to chapter 24 of the same book of Luke. Luke chapter 24. Thank you, Father. Luke chapter 24. And let's look at verse 38. It says, and he said unto them, Jesus is speaking. That's what makes these verses so awesome to me. Why are you troubled? And why do, through, why do thoughts arise in your heart? Thoughts arise. Thinking thoughts arise in your hearts. Your feelings, impulse, affections, desires, they are in your heart, in your mind. That's why the Lord tells us how to control that. Turn back now to Matthew. Like I told you, we have a lot of scriptures. And this, to me, is so awesome. Chapter 6. And the enemy knows this, what I'm about to show you in this verse of um, scripture. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 21, it says... For where your treasure is, the thing that matters to you, the thing that is most important to you, there will your heart be. That's what your mind is going to be centered on. You see, the enemy has done a really good job conditioning us, programming us to be thinking about how we can get rich. How we can advance in our careers. How we can get material things. And that's where your treasure is. That's what your mind is constantly thinking about, pondering on. And when your mind is filled with those things, there's no place for God. Turn to the 22nd chapter of Matthew. Am I making sense to you today? I'm trying to break it down so you can know what your heart is. Your heart is your mind. He whose mind is stayed on thee, thou will keep in perfect peace. If your heart and your mind is on the things of God, the word of God, the enemy doesn't have access to you. He can't afflict you the way he can if you're not thinking about God. Matthew 22. 
Is this making sense? Chapter 22. And here Jesus is speaking again. Verse 37 it says, Jesus said unto them, so it's no doubt Jesus is speaking. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. You can't love God like that if your mind is filled with everything else other than God and who he is and what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross. People have made it cheap and not important who Jesus is and what he's done on the cross. That's by design. That's the enemy's agenda. To have human beings who was created in the image of God. God's creation to not have any reverence or respect for God and who he is. Now I want you to turn to Philippians only to show you about the intellect part. Philippians. Chapter 1. Verse 7 says, Even as it is meet, that word meet in the King James means able. So you can even write that in your Bible so you can remember it. Even as it is, as it is able for me to think, Paul is thinking, this of you all, because I have you in my heart. I have you in my heart and my thoughts. I think about you as much as it is as it is am I am able to. I think of you in my heart. See, mind and heart goes together. That's what I wanted to show you. Now go back to chapter 13 of Matthew. Am I making sense to you all today? You getting this? I want you to think about why it's important for you to regulate how you allow yourself to be programmed. Because even when you're not listening or looking at the things that you have allowed to go into your mind, you're going to still be pondering those things. And that's what the enemy wants to do is have you, your image, your imagination, focus on things that he wants you to focus on instead of what matters to God. I hope this really gets blesses you today. Chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and look at verse 15. And this, this is my message today came from this scripture along with the sister scripture or the matching scripture. We're going to go there next in Isaiah. It says verse 15, for this people's heart is waxed gross Matthew 13, verse 15. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes have closed. Because that's what the enemy want to make your hearing dull to the things of God and close your spiritual eyes. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. You see? And should be converted. And I should heal them. Your heart is important, people. Go to Isaiah, chapter 29. Same verse of scripture. Thank you, Lord. And let's look at verse. This, this one here. Verse 13, it says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much, this is, the, this is the foundational scripture right here for this message. And I pray you incorporate this in your prayer. It says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, they honor me. You know the right thing to say? But have removed their heart far from me. 
and their fear or reverence toward me is taught by the precepts of men. It's not taught by the Holy Spirit. You just know about me and you know the right words to say. You can honor me with your lips, but your heart is nowhere near on me. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome. And so my prayer has been, Lord, please have preeminent preeminence in my heart. Let me think about you when I get up in the morning, when I wake up in the morning, and the last thing I do, and in the middle of the night, Lord, let my heart, my mind, be centered on you. Please, Lord, don't allow me to allow, allow anything else to take your place, your position in my life. So that means you have to be proactive. You have authority. You have control over what you allow to go into your mind. And if you know that the enemy is the God of this world and everything about his programs is meant to put your heart, your mind, your imagination, your images on him, then you need to be doing everything you can to keep his image his thoughts, his agenda from getting on the inside of your mind. Am I making sense to you? I'm trying really hard not to get ahead of myself. Go back to Matthew chapter 13 again. All of these scriptures are so awesome to me. Matthew 13. And please underline these verses of scriptures so you'll know how to find them back. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that everyone who hears this message, that the word of God would penetrate the hardness of the heart and that you wouldn't continue on following after the course of this world, but that you will really get on your face and your knees because only eternal things is what matters to God. Temporal things, material things, they're just temporal Verse 19 says, when, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes, you don't understand to begin with, the wicked one and catch away that which was sown in his heart. So you see, he hears it. It's something that you hear. And before it is able for you to get an understanding of it, it's snatched out of your heart. So before it got into your mind, it's snatched away. Am I making sense? All right. Let's look at chapter 12 of Matthew. In verse 34 it says, Oh, oh generation of vipers. How can you bring evil, speak good things? How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So what's in your mind, your heart, your mouth speaks. Your mind is your heart. And whatever's in your mind, that's what you speak. That's why it's important for you to renew your mind. Go to Rome. Today, if you don't get this, I don't know what's going to help you. How important it is not to continue to allow yourself to be caught up in the riches and material things in the course of this world and the world system. The Lord says, come out of the world system. Come out of Babylon. Come out of it. Come out of it. What the evil that people see in the world today is praying time. It's seeking the Lord's face and his heart. Seeking the heart of God means seeking the mind of God. And you know the mind and the heart and the will of God through seeking his word. Romans chapter 1. We, we know a lot of these scriptures, but when you put them together like this, to me, they, they take on a life of their own. Chapter 1 of, verse tw of chapter Romans, look at verse 21. It says, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, 
but became vain, you see, in their imaginations. And their foolish heart, their foolish, dark, vain heart was darkened. You see that? In their minds, your imagination. You have imagination and images that is in your mind. And when you get dark things, foolish things, vain things in your mind, then your heart becomes darkened. So your mind becomes darkened. Can you see it? All right, turn to 2 Corinthians 10. So the Lord has instructed us what to do. Chapter 10 of 2 Corinthians. Look at verse 4. I'm sorry, 5. It says, we are to cast down imaginations, images, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Cast it down. Cast down the, the enemy's images and imaginations and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So you bring your thoughts into the obedience of Christ because the word is Christ and Christ is the word. So whatever image, whatever imaginations, whatever thoughts, that come into your mind, your heart, you are able to cast them down using the word of God. Speak the word of God. Think the word of God. Know the word of God. Study the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Am I making sense to you all today? I want to get pound this into you. Turn to Romans now. Again, chapter 12. I was getting happy when I was reading these scriptures. Romans chapter 12. I want you to get this today. I'm not in a hurry. I pray that we learn, Jesus teaches us how to put him first, how to love him with our whole heart, that we would love Jesus more than we love the things of this world. Verse 2 of chapter 12 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, that's why your mind, your heart got to be renewed. So that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If God is important to you and you want to know what matters to God, you cannot be conformed to this world. You can't be conformed to this world because the two are at opposite with each other. Am I making sense to you? Go back to Matthew now. A lot of these scriptures, Jesus is the one who is speaking and he's given us what he wants us to know. He's given us the things the enemy don't want us to know. If confusion and deception is in the world. And it's in the world in, mighty, in a mighty way. Chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Look at verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Isn't that something? When your heart is pure, when your mind is pure, you're going to see God. I am so grateful for this word today. And let me tell you how important it is to keep the word of God only going on. Most of the time, I get my messages just from letting the scriptures play all the time. Just, I just let them play. And sometimes the last thing I do before I go to sleep at night is I lay down in the bed with the Bible just playing so I can have peace. And I listen to the scriptures, and they just get in my mind. And then God will give me a He'll give me a message. This whole message came to me from Isaiah 29. You speak with your lips. You honor me with your lips. 
You draw near to me with your mouth, but your heart is nowhere near. This is where this is what's going on. People know how to fake it. People know how to say they know God and speak the word, but your heart isn't even on how you're going to please Him, how you're going to conform to Him. You're so conformed to this world that you're operating on auto. You automatically know what to say. It's not in your heart, in your mind. You're just speaking it. You've memorized it like you do the timetables. But your heart, your mind is not really on how you can please God because you won't do the things as the rest of the people in the world do. You'll be convicted. You'll feel guilty. You'll feel condemned because that's the job of the Holy Spirit to make you know what you're thinking about is not, all, it's not about Him. And it disturbs your peace. It moves you away from the presence of God. And the enemy agenda is to do that through all of the systems in the world, through all of the gimmicks, the gadgets, the technology, the devices. All of these things has been designed to hijack and bring you into captivity. That's why the Lord says, casting down imagination. You have the power by the will of God, the power of God, to be able to cast down those things, not conform to those things. Conforming means you allow yourself to fit into the image or mold of the enemy. Conform, mold, shape. The enemy is shaping and molding your thoughts and not the word of God. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Turn to Luke again. This, uh, the, the gospel is full of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 16. Luke. Chapter 16, God loves us. He don't want us to be condemned. He don't want us to be lost. He don't want us to be in bondage to the enemy. He wants us to be free to love him and to think about him in our hearts. Because if somebody locks you up and, and puts you wherever they put you, they only can do that to your physical you. But if your heart is free in Christ, no matter what the no matter what kind of physical affliction the enemy, no matter how he torments you in his, in your body, if your mind, your heart is renewed by the things of God, he can't take that from you. He can't take the word of God from your heart, from your mind. He can torment your body. He can do all kind of stuff. He can persecute you, but he can't take God's words out of your heart. And he knows that. That's why as soon as people hear the word, the scripture says the devil is right there to try to snatch it away from your mind. Because the mind gets renewed and washed and it's not dark when you have the word of God in it. The enemy knows it better than you do. He knows what he's doing through all of the stuff that's in the world to compete with time or being still and quiet in the presence of God. Am I making sense to you all today? Luke chapter 16, verse 15 says, and this is Jesus speaking, and he said unto them, You are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. So when you try to go after the things that justify yourself and make you look like somebody before men, God knows your heart. <laughs> he knows what's in your mind. Why are you doing what you're doing? And it's an abomination to him. Isn't that something? These are some good verses of scriptures. Turn to 1 Peter. Don't justify and make excuses for why you continue to regulate your life according to the standard of this world. You need to look a certain way. You have to have certain things. You have to hang out with certain people. Hang out with Jesus. <laughs> you know in his word. 1 Peter chapter 3. And this testifies only to the conscience. Your conscience is your heart. Chapter 3, verse 4 says, But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, 
Don't allow the hidden man of the heart to be corruptible. Isn't that something? Don't allow the hidden man to be corruptible. Your conscience, don't allow it to get corruptible. Go to 1 John. This is, this is why you see people walking down the street and they have a sense of despair and hopelessness and their apathy and they don't care about what happens next. They don't care. They, they perpetrate evil because their hearts are darkened and they just imagine every kind of darkness. The, in the scripture, the Lord says before Jesus comes back, it's going to be just like it was in the day of Noah. And people's heart was wicked and they only thought about wicked. The scripture says they only thought about wicked. Their mind was corrupt and wicked and perverted. And that's what we see today and that's what Jesus said. The condition was going to be like just before he returns. So we who say we are the people of God with our lips, with our mouths, should make sure that we're not just speaking words, but that our hearts, our minds, is really not genuinely focused on the things of God. Because if you're not genuinely focused on the things of God, God knows. He knows your heart. And you're not going to be, you know, you're going to be disappointed. And it doesn't have to be that way because Jesus Christ died to make salvation and eternity available for everyone who will conform to his will and not conform to the things of this world. And I don't really know how much more clear I could make this. My, I pray for all of you all the time. I pray for my bloodline. I pray for my community. I pray for the lost souls. I pray for the people who's being persecuted and martyred in lands and being displaced from their homes because they don't have, because of their witness and their confession of the Lord Jesus Christ. They ought to matter to us. We ought to care about what's happening to them. Just because it's not yet happening to us, we shouldn't be so, co so caught up on the things of this world that we don't care about what's happening to the body of Christ. We are so busy uh, pursuing the things that brings us joy, brings us pleasure, bring us happiness, that we don't care about people who's losing their life and their souls and their homes because of Jesus Christ. Do you all hear me today? This is serious stuff. Get right with God. Renew your mind through his word. Spend time praying and seeking, seeking the heart of God. 1 John 3 verse 20 says, For if our heart condemn us, this is, a, this is another blessed scripture, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. See, when you have faith, you have confidence towards God. You believe God's word. You believe that whatever thoughts is in your heart, you can renew your mind. You can cast them down. And then you have confidence in God. Go back again to Matthew. This speaks to the core of you. It's interesting. Matthew 12, verse 40 says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, the core. Your heart is the core, the center of you, in the middle. Not the organ that's beating your blood, but your mind. Serve God, love God with your whole heart. Don't justify evil. Everyone is tempted, everyone falls short. No one's perfect. 
and in your own strength and in your own understanding, you are not any match against the evil things that the enemy throws. The thoughts are some of the fiery darts that the enemy launches against you. But the shield of faith quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the just shall live by faith. You walk by faith. But you have to have faith and you can't have faith in God if you don't spend time with God because you have faith in the enemy and the programming and the things that he is intending on placing in people's heart. And people who hear this message, I don't care who you are, wherever you are, whenever you hear it, and you continue on to do what you want to do, you're going to be held accountable for the things that God makes. Because God through me today is making sure you have a good understanding on what your heart is, how you have to cast down imagination, how you have to make sure that you don't allow your heart to become darkened and vain or materialistic stuff and not place God in the proper place. God don't want your lip service. He don't want you saying things with your mouth that your heart doesn't mean. Am I making sense? I don't know how to make it any simply, simple, simpler <laughs> or clearer. I love everybody. I love Jesus. I'm not trying to condemn anybody. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to wake you up because the scripture says, redeem the times because the days are evil. And anyone who's halfway alert or awake is able to see how dark the days are. And this is a time that we ought to really be doing everything we understand and know how to examine ourselves and make sure that our life is hidden in Christ Jesus. That we're not just speaking words with our mouths, but we don't mean what we say. Am I making sense to you all today? All right, then let's have communion.